Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the press conference today on the global efforts to end female genital mutilation, FGM. Participants include UNFPA Executive Director Babatunge Osotimehin, UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador Angelique Kidjo, Italian Minister of Labor of Social Policies and Gender Equality, Madame Elsa Fornero, Ambassador Cesare Maria Ragaglini of Italy, and Sara Diubate, a young survivor, who will be, they will all be glad to take your questions afterwards. First of all, I know that Mr. Osotimehin, uh, Madame Kijo, and Madame Fornero have statements to make, so we will invite Mr. Osotimehin to do his first. Thank you. Thank you very much. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, distinguished delegates, every year, over three million women and girls face the risk of <coughs> genital mutilation and cutting. Worldwide, we reckon that there are about 100 and 140 women and girls who have already undergone the practice, which has now become a global problem. Female genital mutilation and cutting, in our view, is a clear violation of the fundamental rights of the woman and the girl. And it is also extremely harmful to health. In our lifetime, we can put an end to this practice. UNFPA and UNICEF have worked together and continue to work together in supporting communities to put an end to female genital mutilation and cutting. Our partnership is a great example of how the United Nations agencies, funds and programs can work together to make the most of each other's strengths, core competencies, and leverage our resources. In collaboration with governments, civil society, religious leaders, and community groups, we are making real progress. Abandonment of the practice is speeding up. And this is thanks to the methodology of using culturally sensitive, human rights-based approaches that support <coughs> the positive values within communities that want the best for their girls and women. And three years into the program, some 8,000 communities around the world, particularly in 15 African countries, have abandoned the practice. In the year 2011 alone, 2,000 communities declared that they no longer accept this human rights violation to continue. It is truly heartening that social norms and cultural practices are changing and communities are uniting to protect the rights of the girls and women. Many governments, including the organizers of today's concert, Italy, as well as Austria, Iceland, Ireland, Norway, Luxembourg, Switzerland, are advancing, advancing the course by supporting the program both financially and politically. I want to take the opportunity to thank all those governments and then also call on development partners worldwide and leaders to support this important work. Promoting the health and rights of women and girls is crucial in our efforts to attain, achieve, and sustain development and build a world of opportunities for all. It is our belief and firm belief that together we can end female genital mutilation and cutting in our lifetime. 
and help millions of girls and women to live healthier, fuller lives. Let us together raise our voice to end female genital mutilation and cutting. I thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. Sotimehin. Uh, just to remind you, there are fact sheets available in the back of the room for those of you who would like them. I would now ask Ms. Angelique Kidjo to address the, uh, the audience. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm happy to be here with you on this issue. Um, from my point of view as an African woman, as an African child, I think that we Africans can find a solution to this if our leaders really want to put an end to it. We can have help from around the world if there's no political will. And in the society, people that are convinced that female genital mutilation is a violation of human rights, we won't move nowhere. There are traditions in my country and my continent that I am proud of that I embody, that I carry, that I sing about, but there are some traditions in my continent that we Africans have to have the courage to face and sit together and find a solution. We Africans, we have brains as anybody else in the world. And it's about time in this 21st century that we start showing leadership, brain, courage to really tackle issues that we, only, only us, know how to put an end to it. Cutting a girl is not only taking away her right to choose for herself, is her life in pain. How can we accept that the most precious thing that we have, that our children, can continue suffering from many things, not only female genital mutilation, we have malnutrition, we have so much problem in Africa regarding the future of our continent, the future of our children, that me here as an African person, I want to see leadership in Africa to tackle every problem with the help of Italian government, American government, wh whoever wants to help us, but based on our agenda. We have to show leadership in taking leads in our own life and future. We have to stop our children to be suffering. I mean, we can't just sit down here and talk. I, that's why I'm not a politician. I hate talking. I want action. <laughs> action speaks louder than talk. And all we do most of the time at this, in this building that I know so much is that we spend money doing talking, um, studies, and having all those data and all those numbers, I'm not talking about numbers. I'm talking about people. I'm talking about my sisters. I'm talking about my brothers. I'm talking about my people. I'm talking about the whole world. We are human beings. We are not numbers. How do we take lead in our own life and stop the suffering of our girls? How do we put an end to FGM? That's what I'm here for with the invitation from the uh, Italian um, um, embassy uh, at, uh, at the UN to find, finally sign a bill that will come to the table pretty soon. This concert is not only for you to dance and have fun and to know what we're talking about. We are bringing awareness to the African countries, but also to the world. But once we've done this today, we need everybody's help to really come down to a table and discuss and sign the, 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 the regulation and move forward. We can put an end to female genital mutilation and cotton. It's up to us Africans to do that. Enough talking, enough power game playing is life that is at stake. Let's move on together and work together. I thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Kinjo. Signora Ministro, per piacere. Well, um, I don't know whether it will disappoint Angelique, but also I am a member of the Italian government. I am not a politician either. That's great. So, <laughs> so I will uh, speak very briefly. I will say that I'm very happy to be here uh, to present uh, tonight's event, uh, 
because I really feel that this event is important in raising awareness of a really huge problem that we cannot just sit and discuss and collect data on. So uh, I feel, uh, I know that Italian governments have always been very present in human rights defense, and this particular government is totally committed to this. I know that although we suffer budget restrictions, we are still trying to support African poor countries in different fields, from food, aid, to agriculture, to uh, the battle against the female genital mutilation. So this is something that we really believe in. We have been uh, supportive of UNICEF programs. We have been, uh, uh, together with units, UNICEF on many of these progr uh, programs, and we will continue to, to do this, also, as I said, with little resources. As for tonight, tonight uh, it will be a big event, and I hope uh, uh, there will be a large presence. Uh, you know that this event uh, will be uh, will be given on TV by the UN TV, also by the Italian TV on the 8th of March. Uh, many European TV are also broadcasting the program and uh, having the fortune to have Angelique Pigeot <laughs> is uh, uh, going to make uh, this event uh, a tremendous one. Uh, but it is uh, for a purpose, to help uh, um, these girls uh, and to help uh, African countries uh, towards the adoption of the resolution. We are really supportive of this uh, African consciousness and this African efforts to approve a resolution because we feel, we think, that the resolution will have important consequences. So we are together with them, but as Angelique said, it's for them to be in the front line, and uh, we really support this. I know that. <laughs> so I hope to see you tonight uh, at the event. <laughs> Thank you very much, Madam Minister. Ambassador, Ms. Uh, Diubati, do you have something you'd like to say, or should we open the floor to questions? Uh, uh, thank you very much. I don't think I have to add uh, much more to what the Minister and uh, Angelique uh, and uh, the executive director of uh, UNPA have had. Uh, on my part, uh, I can say that uh, I'm really proud that I have uh, uh, had the privilege to work with our, our African countries uh, and friends uh, uh, during the last year, uh, during an action initiative which led uh, the African Union to uh, adopt a decision to present uh, during this session a resolution the General Assembly. Uh, it's their decision, but we are very happy that they did it, and uh, we are very supportive. The concert in itself uh, is uh, a, a way to raise awareness uh, within the membership of the United Nations, and when the resolution will be presented in the General Assembly, we hope that it can be approved uh, by consensus. Through the broadcasting of the concert, uh, I think that hundreds of million persons uh, will see the concert in the next few days, and this will also raise awareness uh, in the public opinion, especially in African countries where 80 televisions will, bro uh, will broadcast the concert. And this is not a point of arrival for us. This is just another point of departure. And at the end will be when uh, the practice will uh, uh, be terminated uh, in, Africa and in Africa and in other countries. And that will be our achievement, and uh, uh, especially the achievement of uh, African people. Thank you. Is uh, yeah, I'm going to have a brief, uh, a brief speech, as if people have questions later on, we can discuss that in more details. My name is Soran Yubate. I'm from Guinea, West Africa. 
I'm going to speak a little bit about, about my own experience and what I think about my feelings about being caught and really what I think about the practice. I remember when I was about five or six years old, one of my great aunts gathered myself, two of my cousins, and two friends of mine from the neighborhood to go for the courting. Nobody told me directly that it was going to happen that way, but I overheard adults talking about it. So, but actually, I didn't have any. I have. No, I had no comprehension of what was going to happen. I just heard people talking about something. I remember that we were caught by a doctor, and afterward, I recall having some pain for a few days, but nothing else after that. And then uh, I knew my when I grew up, my mother. I asked my mother why she, you know, she let me go through it, and she told me that. She, in the beginning, she didn't give her consent, but because of the fa family's pressure, she had to give up. And then I, I understood really what was her, her feelings about it, but you cannot do anything if a family member is re really wants to do it, even though the mother doesn't want it, they would do it in any way. And so my feeling about being caught is like they stole something from me because nobody asked me if I I wanted to be caught. Even though I was about six, if somebody had explained to me that it was gonna be painful, I would have said no, I don't wanna I don't wanna go through it. And I think the the the, the practice has no serves no purpose. It's life threatening and complication occur. And I know many girls who still are still carrying the the, the traumatic experience. And so in con to conclude, I would, I would like to say that the practice has to end. For that, we need a collective effort by educating people, communities actually, not only people but the communities. We also have to raise awareness on the continents, not only here, mm -hmm. sitting, sitting around and talking about it, but we have to go on the field and educate people, let them realize that it's very dangerous, it has serious consequences, such as childbirth complications, bleeding, infections. Uh, it, might, it, it would take some time before everybody accept the idea that it's not good, but we have to keep work, working on it, and I guess we'll succeed. Thank you.